you've messed it up. You're stupid. Now, today's Daily Dose of Stupid is really special because it's just one Daily Dose of Stupid segment, but there's two sources of the stupid going on. And normally when we have two sources of stupid, it's one of the things where we have two sides fighting with one, in one another and both sides happen to be wrong. That is not the case for this one. We've got one stupid person playing off of the other one, and one says something dumb, and someone and the other one tries to agree with them, and in turn says something even more stupid, and it just kind of goes in this downward spiral. This happened in a segment that has been going on on CNN for quite some time now. It's the segue between Chris Cuomo and Don Lemon show, where the two of them kind of play off of one each other, uh, one another, and just try to out liberal one another. And in turn, of course, they wind up saying very stupid, ridiculous things. But this particular night, there was a veritable cornucopia of stupid to go around. So we'll go ahead and play that first clip. And remember, when you're watching this, that the subject matter, the reason that they are on this talking point is they are discussing tearing down statues of the Founding Fathers and, and people that have done so in recent weeks. Mind you, not Confederate generals, even though it was wrong to do that as well. Now they're talking about George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, men like this. And, and this is where that clip goes. So if someone says, oh, this is going to go way too far. Well, how far is this going to go? Just say, no, we're not. That's not what we're doing here. What we're trying to do is learn about each other. We're trying to put history in the right context. We're trying to um, to get you to understand that a lot of what you've been taught in history has been propaganda and some things you need to unlearn so that you can become a better citizen and that the promise of what America is is available to all. Why not have the mindset of, well, maybe we should be taking down some of these statues. Yeah, engage what the do fear. We do? Exactly. Engage the fear. But people are afraid where does to that change. come from? Where does it end? Yeah. But that, that's not coming from a place of logic. Uh, nobody's saying, well, then it never ends. Y yeah, it does end. First of all, because what you're dealing with is a time in history where slavery was OK. So you can see there that the level of stupid just gets cranked up to 11. And the reason that that is the case is because they are playing off one another. The stupidity only increases the further on in the clip that they go because they're trying so hard to agree with the stupid thing that the other guy just said, and that's how they wind up in this place where they're talking about tearing down statues of, of guys like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson somehow seems reasonable to them. And because that's their stance, they continue to say things that are continuously even more and more idiotic. What's funny about all this, though, especially with the two of them basically trying to make the point, oh, that they're, the people that are opposing us on this, they're trying to say that this could go too far, and, and where does it end? And, and Chris Cuomo going, well, yeah, it does end. See, here's the funny thing about Chris Cuomo saying that. This is round three. Because you may recall that several years ago when we were having this debate on the national stage, that it was about the flag. It was about the state of South Carolina. This happened back in 2015. But the state of South Carolina flying the Confederate flag over its state capital, which I agreed, not a good idea, especially if you know the history and how that came about and how it was actually started specifically to be an intimidation factor to black people. It was done in the civil rights movement basically to voice South Carolina's disdain for it at the time. And, and they're not the only ones that did it. Other states did it, too. Uh, but anyway, if you understand that and you remember that they said exactly the same thing when we were talking about bringing the flag down, they're like, oh, all these conservatives, all these people on the right are saying, when is this going to end? Well, this is where it's going to end. And then, of course, what, like, I don't know, a week later, people were having discussions about tearing down statues of Confederate generals. And, and that is something that kind of continued on for a while. And Fast forward to today, now there are people in the Democrat Party, this is becoming an increasingly mainstream Democrat idea to not just tear down the Confederate generals and people that fought for the Confederacy, whether they were pro-slavery or not, but now also taking it to tearing down Washington and Lincoln. And so here's Chris Cuomo ironically saying, all these people are saying, well, this never stops. Yeah, we're, we're on round three of that. Like, if you remember anything past 15 seconds 
in the past, you know that that argument holds weight because thus far it's continued to go. And what's also funny is that the definition of progressivism is that it's continuous. It continues to go on. They continue on with this line of thinking and it never ends. That's one of the precepts of, you can go all the way back to, to Heigl uh, in Germany. Like th This goes back even before Marx when you're talking about the ideas of progressivism that, that humanity constantly goes down this trail. And so it's hilarious that Chris Cuomo is saying, well, of course this ends. Well, no, not if you're a progressive. The whole mantra of progressivism is to constantly progress and continue onward. Now, if you have a biblical worldview, you understand that mankind doesn't always progress. We can progress, we can regress. This is something that happens in waves. We can go up and down, and that's because we believe in an objective truth. Unfortunately, this is actually the least stupid thing, or not the least stupid thing, but the second stupidest thing <laughs> that was said in this monologue. Here's the first. But here's the thing. Jesus Christ, if you believe in, if, you, if that's who you believe in, Jesus Christ, admittedly was not perfect when he was here on this earth. So why are we deifying the founders of this country? Okay. <laughs> Don Lennon. First of all, the perfection of Jesus Christ is literally one of the most basic tenets of Christianity. Literally, the whole system doesn't work if Jesus wasn't perfect. None of it. I don't think I have to explain this to the average person because I would like to believe that the average person is actually and more intelligent than Don Lemon, and knows that if you do not have a perfect Christ, a perfect sacrifice to be offered up on the cross and have his perfect sinless blood shed for mankind, there is no salvation. Literally, the whole religion doesn't work if you don't believe in the perfection of Christ. Now, there are a lot of different stances that a lot of people ta take through all different denominations, even seeing aspects of Jesus' life differently. There have been literal sects of Christians that fought, I mean literal violence and fought, over disagreements within the religious orthodoxy of what they believed was correct. You know what nobody, no Christian has ever fought over? Whether or not Jesus Christ was perfect. Literally not one. It's also important to note that Don Lemon, who doesn't really, he's not religious anymore, he was raised Baptist and he went to a Catholic school, did he just sleep through his entire religious education? Did he sleep through every single church service? Because if you really were, as he claims to be, and I have no reason to believe that he's lying about this, was raised as a Baptist and went to a Catholic school that at some point they might have covered this? I mean, that's about as basic to Christianity as any other concept. Literally, the entire religion doesn't work if that is not the case. Every even somewhat mainstream line of Christianity believes this. Even if that, even though, of course, it is wrong, what it does show is a blatant ignorance of Christianity. And the reason that he believes this is because it is the logical conclusion of postmodernism. If you believe that Jesus wasn't really the Messiah, he wasn't really God, uh, then that's the case. But He's not even right along those lines because he prefaces his statement by saying, if you believe in God, if you believe in Jesus, then you believe he wasn't perfect. No, literally everybody that believes in Jesus believes he was perfect. If you don't believe in Jesus, if you don't believe he's the savior of mankind, then he's not perfect. I mean, you cannot sync those two. To, to kind of illustrate this really quickly, because this is a, a very, very common trope within postmodernist thought. They, they try to invent the postmodern Jesus who wasn't really God and never really claimed to be and was kind of, they, his apostles came along afterward and embellished a lot and made him into a God when he really wasn't. But again, the people that believe in Jesus don't believe in that. But 
even that doesn't make any sense. It comes from this postmodernist idea that you can have your cake and eat it too, that you can acknowledge Jesus as some kind of really good moral teacher, and, you know, along the same lines of Buddha and, and maybe some other Greek philosophers, your Aristotles and your Socrates, so a, a good moral teacher, but, but not God and not deity and not somebody that ever claimed to be. To illustrate this point, I'm going to go to somebody that is even better versed in this stuff and, and can speak even better than I can, C.S. Lewis. And so if you'll look at this quote from Mere Christianity, Lewis says, I am trying here to prevent anyone saying the really foolish thing that people often say about him, talking about Jesus here, of course. I'm ready to accept Jesus as a great moral teacher, but I don't accept his claim to be God. That is the one thing we must not say. A man who was merely a man and said the sort of things Jesus said would not be a great moral teacher. He would be either a lunatic, on the level with the man who says he is a poached egg, or else he would be the devil of hell. Um, I think nowadays you actually can identify as a poached egg, so Lewis's <laughs> writings here from the 1950s a little out of date. Uh, now the left would accept even that. Uh, but he goes on to say, you must make your choices either this man was and is the son of God, or else a madman or something worse. You can shut him up for a fool, you can spit him out and kill him as a demon, or you can fall to his feet and call him Lord and God. But let us not come with any patronizing nonsense about his being a great human teacher. He has not left that open to us. He did not intend to. And again, this is something that goes back to the fundamentals of Christianity. Either Jesus is God, or he's a terrible person that has led millions of people astray and have had people put his faith in him despite being a false prophet and a liar or a crazy person. There is no halfway point with Jesus. And like Lewis just alluded to, Jesus wanted it that way. He wanted you to not be able to say, oh, well, you know, he was a great moral teacher, but he wasn't really God. Well, then he's a huge liar, probably the biggest one in all of human history. And you couldn't say that that person was a moral teacher. And, and Lewis points it very succinctly that you, you really only have two options with Jesus. And so Don Lemon is one of those people that tries to have his cake and eat it too, that, that doesn't want to go out and full-on bash Jesus, but you know also doesn't want to admit that he's God or anything. And so he arrives at this halfway point, and that's how you can arrive at saying something so blatantly stupid and contradictory to Jesus' own teachings as to say that, well, Jesus, it's not like Jesus was perfect. That's the only way a person can arrive at that if they are marred neck deep in this postmodernist thought, even if he were right. Even if Don Lemon's analogy worked there, even if Jesus was not perfect, as absurd as that would be, even then his analogy doesn't work. Because there is no rule that says that we could only put perfect people on pedestals and, and put them as statues. Now, I don't agree with deifying the Founding Fathers either. I can name, because I am a student of history and because I have studied the Founders so much, I can name a vice or a problem that I have with literally any Founding Father. Some are more minor than others, but I can point out flaws. I, I don't think that they were perfect men. But what's so funny is, we've had several billion people walk this earth. We have seven billion now. We've had at least a few billion more if you count up all the people of all of human history. And Don Lemon picked literally the only human being in all of human history that that analogy does not work for. <laughs> I mean, those are astronomical odds that he would pick the only person out of the entirety of the human race from beginning to end that that analogy falls short on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but the point doesn't make sense. Because if the rule is we're not allowed to have statues of imperfect people, then we have to tear down literally every statue that isn't of Jesus. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, 
So now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.